yesterday, when I, uh, Sunday, uh, I was taking some notes and I said, man, you know what? It'll be pretty cool to do a video on, on tips on how to be a better dad, right? Or even like how to be a better parent, right? And I'm not an expert in parenting, uh, but uh, we do come, I do come from a blended family of eight, from aging from 26 to uh, five years old, 13, 11, 16, 18. Uh, I, I pr pretty much have someone in every, every age group, it seems like. But hey, I'm going to get right into it and um, I'm going to share some of the, mi the mistakes that I made early as a dad. I became a dad when I was 16 years old with twin boys. And so I had like zero parenting experience. Uh, if y'all haven't heard my story before, but my dad passed away when I was like four years old, four or five years old, somewhere around there. I'm not sure exactly how old I was, but I know I was very young when he passed away. And so I, I really didn't have no good parenting skills. My mom was a single mom. She worked pretty much every day and so I just had to like figure it out as I grew up but hey uh, before we get started I got I got a bonus tip for y'all it's gonna be the, a bonus tip it's gonna be like tip number six I think I'll keep number six as a bonus tip but first I need y'all to do one thing man I need y'all to subscribe like I said on my previous video 98% of the people watching are not subscribers so I was like what the heck like come on man show me some love Hit the, hit the uh, subscribe button or do a thumbs up at least. Leave a comment. If there's a good message, a bad message, this is, let, me, let me know if someone's listening to me, right? But hey, first, the number one is going to be habits, right? So let's get right into number one. Number one is going to be habits, okay? And this is something that, that, I, that I realized um, when my boys were like in uh, high school. They were like about maybe 15 going into high school, sixth grade, uh, eighth grade uh, transition time. But what I noticed was when I was raising my kids, my boys, uh, I noticed that after the age of about maybe 12, 13, uh, they start to come up with their own opinions. They start to come up with their own thoughts and they start to get outside influence and so why why are habits so important at the, at this stage as a parent because look as parents you know we 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 raised our kids telling them what to do don't do this don't do that you're gonna go here get dressed because we're leaving here right and so what happens is we, as we get into the habit of always telling our kids what to do what to do what to do right so by the time they come become 13 or 14, you know, when you tell them to do something, they start to use their own judgment and they say, why is, why is my parent telling me to do this when they don't even do this? And so that's where the, the conflict starts to, to build up at. And what happens is the conflict starts and then the conflict turns into like resentment because you're telling your kids to do one thing, but you're doing a completely different thing. And so they don't, they don't trust what you're saying because it doesn't make sense. You're telling them to do something, but yet you're not doing it. For example, you might tell your kids, I don't want you drinking. You're not going to be drinking with your friends. You're not going to be doing this. But yet you're this, this big party animal. You're always drinking or smoking, right? Smoking is one of the big things. You tell your kids, I don't want you smoking. I don't want you doing this. But at the same time, maybe you're smoking. Maybe you're doing some of those bad things that you don't want them to do. When I realized that I was doing a lot of bad things that I didn't want my kids to do, I had to shape it up, man. I had to, I had to make a decision, you know, and, and I said, hey, you know what? You know, I'm not, I'm not able to tell my kids what to do anymore. Now, now they're watching what I do. And so my, my habits are influencing them. So if, I'm, if I have lazy habits, my kids are going to pick up on those habits. And so you got to be very aware. You got to say, okay, you know what? What habits do I have that... that that might hurt my kids down the road. What habits do I have that are pretty bad habits that I need to start addressing? Because you need to start hitting those targets, hitting those uh, habits and changing those habits so that they don't influence your kids going forward. Number one is going to be habits. That's so important. Look at your habits. See how you can change those habits up. Uh, number two is going to be praise. 
praise and versus mental toughness, right? We always tell our kids, uh, hey, get up. You don't be crying. You don't, you don't, uh, you know, we never let them express themselves, right? So when kids become, like I said, even the same age, 13 through maybe 15, they start to, they start to kind of want to have a voice too. And a lot of times we, we ignore that voice or we ignore the praise and we, and we give them like this tough, we, we, we call it tough love, right? Where we don't hug our, our, our kids because we don't hug, hug our sons because we don't want them to be hugging guys, right? You know, but, 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 you know, sons need the praise too. They need the hug. They, they need the, the, the affection from their dad. They, they need that, right? Because they need to know that they're doing good. They need to know that they're making their dad happy. And this is, this is why, think about this. If you're a dad and, and you say, man, you know what? I never really, I never really, uh, you know, hug my son like that. You know, I, I don't want him to think that, that I'm a certain way. I, I, I don't, I don't want them to think it's funny, right? What's going to happen is, is your son or your daughter is going to, is going to run into a gang. And what, the first thing the gangs are going to do is the gang's going to show them affection. The gang's going to show them love, man. Hey, we're love. We're going to show, and, and your kids are going to experience something that they've never felt. So they're going to be drawn to it. And so you want to make sure you're in control of that influence. You want to make sure that, that you're giving them the affection and, and, and the guidance and, and the love that more than anybody, because look, if you're giving them, you know, the affection, if you're giving them the, the hugs and you're giving them the kisses and you're giving them the, the, the support that they need inside, Outside influence is going to have to compete with that. So that outside influence is going to have to be stronger than what you're giving them. All right. It's, it's all about influence, guys. Hey, hug your kids, man. Tell them you love them. Tell them you're proud of them. Support them. Encourage them. Remember, one of, one of, the, one of the biggest um, forms of abuse is verbal abuse. You, you can hit someone, but verbal abuse is, is the worst, man. Verbal abuse sticks. Verbal, verbal abuse plants the seed in your kid's mind. So, hey, stay away from the verbal abuse. Stay away from it, man. Stay away from it. Uh, number three is going to be, hey, if you're a dad, hey, man, like, it, it wouldn't hurt to do some chores around the house. Do some dishes. Wash some clothes. Uh, show your son that, hey, you know what? Like, hey, a guy can do this, too. A guy can cook. Hey, teach your son how to cook, man. I mean, man, I, I used to cook. I shot... I, I showed my kids how to cook, man, and, and cooking is our thing. It's, it's, a, it's also a time. Check this out. Cooking is the best time to communicate with your kids because you're doing, you're doing an activity and you're talking about issues at the same time. So versus trying to talk about the issue all in one time, if, you, if you're cooking or if you're washing dishes, is the best time to talk to your son. Hey, son, how was your day? Uh, what's going on in school? What's going on at your, at your new job? Uh, you know, and, and, and start to just ask more questions. Listen, because when you start to listen, they're going to start to just share what's going on, you know, because a lot of times, you know, you pick them up from school and you ask, hey, how was your day? You say, oh, it was a good day, right? Uh, hey, tell me what happened today. You know, tell me what, what happened. Oh, well, you know, um, you know, one of my teachers, well, you know, this happened in class today and, you know, this happened. And then you go and ask more, oh, how did that make you feel? You know what? It actually kind of upset me a little bit, you know, uh, because what they said, it kind of hurt my feelings. They said something about my parents that I didn't like. And, and, and you got to you got to start to dig because let me tell you something like uh, one time my son said uh, the teacher made a comment to him and uh, I would not have found this out if I were not have asked questions. So I, I told my son, I said, you know what is, is, is what he said true? And he thought about it. And he goes, no. I said, well, you don't have to worry about it. I said, if someone tells you something and it's not true, don't worry about it. They're, they're, just, they're just speaking what they think. Maybe they're going through something bad. Okay, so hey, um, cooking and cleaning uh, around the house is the best time to, to, to bond that communication. You know, men, women, uh, moms, dads, either way it works. Uh, number four is fishing or hunting, uh, sometime, some kind of outdoor activity, camping, um, I, I was never really big at hunting. I was big on fishing. I used to take my kids fishing every, every weekend. Uh, this man, just getting out there, teaching them how to fish. It's interesting because, you know, you have to remember, you know, uh, when you're out there fishing, like don't, don't, don't be so like worried about everything. Like, 
let them let them make mistakes let them get caught up let them uh, you know get the rod tangled up let them try to figure out how to you know do the hooks let them figure out how to do the shrimp let them like get smelly let them get dirty it's fine like you're out there to have fun you're out there to to let them experience that and you're out there just to to, to build that relationship so, so don't worry about if you don't catch any fishes worry about the time that you spend with them don't worry about you know if if you're having to spend most of the time uh, setting their hooks or whatever. Don't worry about that. Just enjoy the moment. Have fun. Make some laughs. Hey, enjoy enjoy the evening. And you know what? What's gonna happen is you're gonna you're gonna start to influence them to want to do those things with their family whenever they get older. Uh, number five is gonna be use your time wisely. Uh, this is gonna be very very important because kids are influenced by their environment and their friends. Okay. So if your if your son or daughter is at school all day, okay, they're around their friends, they're being influenced 85% of the time. So when they come home, or you're or you're you're in that car with them driving to, to, to school or you're driving with them on the weekends, use that time wisely, man. Use that time wisely and just try to talk to them. Uh, try to listen to some, you know, one thing that I do with my kids, I always listen to podcasts or I, we always listen to YouTube videos and it's always something about, you know, uh, the mindset, setting goals, something, something motivating and something, uh, we, we listen to a lot of, um, you know, sermons and, uh, stuff that, that, that's going to like influence them, stuff that's going to make them think while we're driving, because I have, I only have that small window of time. So I need to make sure that that I'm actually putting some valuable, valuable, valuable information within that time. So use your time wisely, man. Use your time wisely with your kids. If you're, if you're in the car, try to have a conversation with them. Try to put something that y'all can both listen to uh, on the radio, a podcast, a YouTube video. Uh, something besides like loud music. Something besides distraction. Or maybe some, some nice music y'all can both sing to. Like just to kind of help that bond, right? And uh, this is gonna be this is gonna be the bonus. This is gonna be the bonus. I'm glad y'all stuck around for this. Before I give you the bonus, I want to make sure that that y'all do subscribe, man. Because like I said, 85 to like 80, 98 percent of the viewers are non-subscribers. So that means like people are just kind of like looking at the stuff. They're getting information from it, but they're not showing no love, man. Show some love, man. The only reason why I do this is really to to just share everything that I've been through, share some of my failures. Uh, share some of my strengths, share some of my weaknesses, and hopefully that adds value to your life, man. So uh, the bonus one is going to be trust. Uh, trust is going to be, man, everything, man. Uh, to build trust, you got to make sure that, that, that you become a man of your word. You, be, you, be, you got to make sure that you do what you say you're going to do to your kids, man. If you tell them you're going to do something, just make sure you commit to doing it. Uh, use... Sorry, these are, these are two words you got to make sure you protect, okay? It's going to be sorry and I promise, okay? Don't don't throw sorry out all the time. Like, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Like, only make it meaningful. Hey, son, you know what? Yesterday, I, I got I kind of got out of hand when I raised my voice at you. I was out of line. I, I'm sorry for that. Apologize, okay? And, and a promise, like... If you're always making promises to your kid, yeah, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there. I promise. I promise. Uh, you're going you're gonna to lose that trust from them. And, and as parents, man, we need to have that trust because we need to make sure that we're influencing our kids the right way. We don't want some idiot at their school that, that has a broken home or that idiot at school that's doing drugs to be influencing our kid because they trust that person. So, man, we got to watch out for that, man. Uh, one thing that really works to, to really build trust back is to, uh, is to just write a letter. A lot of times, write a letter to your kid, write a letter to your daughter. Hey, I just want to share something that, that I feel really bad for. You know, over the last couple of years, I haven't been the best parent, you know, and, and just share why you're not a good parent. Maybe you never had no parenting skills. Maybe no one ever got, maybe you didn't have a dad. Maybe you didn't have a mom. I, didn't, I grew up without a dad. And so... I made sure that I, I did the best I could, and I, sh I told my kids, hey, you know what, like, son, you know, I'm trying to do the best I can, man. I didn't have no guidance, but if just give me some slack, man. I'm trying to do the best I can. I'm not, I'm not going to be perfect, but, you know, I'm, I'm really trying. 
and I want to get better, you know. And maybe your kids need to hear that from you in a written letter. And the, and the reason why letters are so important is because it leaves out the emotion. So, for example, if you want to confront your, your, your son or daughter because maybe y'all's trust isn't, isn't 100%, there's going to be a lot of emotion. And what might happen is they might raise their voice at you or, or they might say something that's going to make trigger you or you might say something that triggers them. And then before you know it, it's, it's full of emotion and nothing's going to get accomplished. But a lot of times if you write a letter, it leaves the emotion out. And so it just shares the, the message. And, and you want to kind of relay the message and leave out the emotion. So, hey, letters are going to be a very powerful thing. Uh, if you're not a writer, you got to write. You got to figure out something. You got you to gotta make sure that you spend the time to write. Even if your grammar's not perfect, mine's not perfect. But I still make attempts to write people notes because that's the way I like to express things. All right, guys. Hey, once again, thanks for watching. Till next time.